they lived a very nice life and they had no clue what was going on. We didn't know what was going on and we thought the war would be over or we would not be affected. This is a photograph in Romania of my father and mother, and I'm in the middle. My father was very handsome. He was like a movie star. Uh, here he possibly just returned from a work camp. They took him away, and then uh, he came back. Germans passed through Romania to fight the Soviet Union, and they stayed in my house. An officer stayed in my house because we had a big house, and he was very, very nice to me. And my mother said, you know, we heard about Kristallnacht. I mean, what's going on? I mean, how can you be so nice to us and your, my child? And he said, we come basically from the same background, middle class people, have children just like you. I like you. but." If I have to kill you, I will kill you, because that's what a soldier does. So they left, they went to fight, and uh, in the meantime, my father had heard what was going on. He started then, at that point, to organize Jews and non-Jews to fight the Germans when they came back. When they came back, someone told them that my father was organizing a resistance and they, uh, they killed him. I was six years old and they beat him severely and they took snow and put it under his clothing so that it would melt and then freeze again and he died. That was like 1943. I had to wear a Jewish star to identify myself as being Jewish. There was fighting going around all the time, and uh, we were constantly running away from um, where we were living. So uh, we would go from town to town, and you know, since it was a war, people would leave, abandon their houses. So we, we'd find a house and take it over and live there for a week or whatever, a month. And then we come back. You know, so since we were like, quote, middle class, they knew where to go. They had some money, they knew where, where to run, uh, who to pay off. Uh, and then at that time, the major way of moving around was horse and wagon. So we had horse and wagon and piled all our stuff in the wagon. And so I was about six. So this was happening between the ages of six and nine. I left Romania when I was nine years old. We were able to leave on the first boat from a, uh, from a port on the uh, Black Sea called Constanza. It's a resort area, and we were able to come to America. We, this is the boat that we came. My mother's on the left, and I'm saluting. And we left on my birthday, coincidentally, on January the 23rd, 1946.
Even though we were Americans, we were, in, in, from some point of view, in a worse case. We're here in Manhattan with no money, no place to go. But fortunately, uh, we went to, to this uh, cousin's house, and he took us in, and we have a place to live. And um, that was our first experience in America. Staten Island is the greatest place to raise children. Our young Israel, it's a big family. The JCC, there's no place like it any place and allows uh, Holocaust survivors from all over to get together, to support each other, to be with each other. Most of us are getting older. Many of us, many of the survivors are not alive anymore. But the experience that we had has to be related to others. The European experience was tragic because I lost most of my mother's family, I lost my father, but it made me more resilient. It made me tougher. It allowed me to succeed. <laughs> 